conjunctival neoplasms. Three basic categories. Squamous, proliferation of conjunctival squamous epithelium. Lymphoid, proliferation of normal stromal resident population of lymphocytes. And melanocytic, proliferation of normal resident melanocytes. Squamous lesions. Squamous papilloma. This is benign proliferation of conjunctival epithelium. It is a viral lesion caused by human papilloma virus detected by DNA hybridization. In children, they are multiple and recurrent. Papilloma shows marked hypercellularity with cellular atypia, nuclear hyperchromatism, and atypical mitosis. Two types exist, pedunculated type and sessile type. Differences between pedunculated and sessile conjunctival papilloma. Pedunculated conjunctival papilloma. It affects children, caused by human papilloma virus type 6 and 11, in the inferior fornix and semilunar fold, as multiple branching fronts originating from a narrow base. Recurrence is common, dysplasia may be present, and invasive carcinoma is unlikely. Sessile conjunctival papilloma. It affects adults, caused by human papilloma virus type 16 and 18, occurring in the limbus and may spread on cornea, as regular spaced fibrovascular fronts originating from a broad base. Recurrence may occur, dysplasia is common, and there is risk of invasive carcinoma. Actinic keratosis is focal leukoplakic patches that may develop over a pterygium or pinguaculum. It is caused by chronic ultraviolet light that damages epidermoid cells and causes parakeratosis and actinic elastosis. There is acanthotic epithelium with parakeratosis, cellular atypia, stroma shows actinic elastosis of the stroma, and it rarely recurs. Conjunctival intraepithelial neoplasia, or CIN. There is replacement of the conjunctival epithelium by atypical squamous cells. Some cases are caused by viral infection with human papilloma virus 16 or 18 as detected by in situ DNA hybridization. In young adults, it is associated with immunosuppression as HIV infection. Conjunctival intraepithelial neoplasia may be gelatinous, which appears as ill-defined lesions that blend with surrounding normal conjunctiva, leukoplakic, showing hyperkeratosis, parakeratosis, and dyskeratosis, or papilliform, that appears as sessile papilloma with severe dysplasia. The recurrence is frequent, 30% at 10 years with complete surgical excision, and 50% at 10 years with positive margins. The basal germinative layer is involved first. Characteristically, there is abrupt transition between normal and acanthotic dysplastic epithelium. Acanthosis, cellular atypia, and dysplasia occur, which may be mild dysplasia, less than 50% of epithelium replaced, or severe dysplasia, more than 50% of epithelium replaced. Invasive squamous cell carcinoma. Malignant cells have broken through epithelial basement membrane, invading substantia propria. It is more common in Africa and Middle East. Predisposing factors of invasive squamous cell carcinoma. Actinic keratosis. Squamous cell carcinoma may have an exophytic or papillary growth pattern with growth in interpapabral fissure and orbit. Conjunctival dysplasia. Squamous cell carcinoma have an endophytic growth pattern with invasion of cornea, sclera, interior of globe, and posteriorly to the orbit. Xeroderma pigmentosa. The gross picture of invasive squamous cell carcinoma shows papillary masses appearing at limbus. Feeder vessels with enlargement of the mass. Conjunctiva is initially mobile, then becomes fixed to the globe. Cytology. Alcohol-fixed pap stain smear shows nuclear hyperchromasia and high nuclear to cytoplasmic ratio. Microscopically, there are atypical epithelial cells invading the substantia propria and sclera. Spindle cell carcinoma represents an aggressive variant. Mucoepidermoid carcinoma is a rare variant with squamous cells, mucus-secreting cells, and basal cells. It behaves more aggressively 
with early invasion and recurrence. Spread of invasive squamous cell carcinoma. Local spread. Lateral spread over the conjunctival surface, covering the globe to the orbit. Deep spread. Infiltrating corneal Bowman's membrane, decimates membrane, and sclera. Intraocular extension. Canal of slam, angle involvement. Perivascular and perineural spread to the supracoroidal space. Orbital and intraocular infiltration, especially with incompletely excised and recurrent lesions. Eyelid and extraocular extension. Lymph node metastasis to preauricular, submandibular, and upper deep cervical lymph nodes, which is very rare. Lymphoid tumors. Arise from conjunctival resident population of lymphocytes in substantia propria. Show salmon patch or fish flesh appearance. Readily movable over epibulbar surface. Types of lymphoid tumors. Reactive lymphoid hyperplasia. Atypical lymphoid hyperplasia. Malignant lymphomas. Stage IE well differentiated lymphocytic lymphomas and malt lymphomas. Systemic malignant lymphoma rarely presents as a conjunctival lesion. Associated systemic disease is present in 20% of cases, prior, concurrent, or subsequent. Lymphoid tumors are benign lesions having the following histopathological features. Follicular appearance, germinal centers, abundant capillaries with plumb endothelial cells, polymorphous infiltrate containing mixture of cells, material lymphocytes, plasma cells, and xenophils. Polyclonal infiltrate with immunohistochemical markers. Signs of malignancy. Monomorphic infiltrate with cytologic atypia. Monoclonality, CD20 positive. Mucosa-associated lymphoid tissue, or MALT. Immunoregulatory system of the conjunctiva. Found also in other mucosal surface epithelia like in the respiratory tract, gastrointestinal tract, and genitourinary tract. Common immunologic features include rich population of antigen-presenting cells, specialized structures for localized antigen processing, unique effector cells, intraepithelial T cells, and mast cells. Mold sites share expression of specific cell adhesion molecules on effector T and B cells. Melanocytic tumors, benign melanocytic lesions, benign epithelial melanosis, ocular melanocytosis, and conjunctival nevi. Pre-invasive melanocytic tumors, primary acquired melanosis, malignant melanocytic tumors, conjunctival melanoma. Benign melanocytic tumors, benign epithelial melanosis, flat, uninflamed, non-vascularized, and finally to coarsely granular brown pigmentation generally occurring in the interpalpebral zone of the conjunctiva. It could be congenital or acquired. Seen in dark skinned persons, racial melanosis, climatic or chronic conjunctival irritation. Could be caused by irradiation, arsenic poisoning, Addison's disease, and cloasma of pregnancy, bilateral and maybe asymmetrical. Racial melanosis, benign acquired melanosis, pathology, Light brown pigmentation of perilimbal and interpalpebral bulbar conjunctiva. The pigmentation moves with the conjunctiva. Heavy pigmentation restricted to the basal cell layer of conjunctival epithelium. The clear melanocytic cells are difficult to demonstrate. Absent nest formation, minimal inflammation of substantia propria with normal lymphocytic population and scattered histiocytic melanophages. Conjunctival nevi. This is a hamartoma formed of nests of benign nevus cells along epithelial base and or substantia propria. It is a congenital lesion that enlarge or become more pigmented at puberty or during pregnancy and it may be amelanotic. Conjunctival nevi could occur at the limbus where they are flat or in the bulbar conjunctiva and caruncle where they are elevated. They could be pigmented or amelanotic. Conjunctival nevi are mobile with conjunctiva. Intralegional epithelial inclusion cysts occur in compound and subepithelial types. Types of conjunctival nevi. Three variants exist. Junctional nevi, where cells are located solely, 
between the epithelium and the substantia propria. Subepithelial nevi. Cells are entirely in the substantia propria, equivalent to intradermal nevus of the skin. Compound nevi. Cells are found both in the epithelium and the substantia propria. Prognosis of conjunctival nevi. Cellular proliferation results in secondary lymphocytic infiltration. Rapid enlargement occurs at puberty due to hormonal factors. Those with junctional activity show rare malignant transformation. Oculodermal melanocytosis or nevus of Ota. This is congenital melanosis of episclera with cutaneous involvement. It occurs in 1 to 2,500 of people, more common in Hispanic, Asian and black races. There is congenital periocular flat cutaneous pigmentation with associated episcleral and uveal pigmentation. 0.4% of cases develop uveal melanoma. Slightly more risk of orbital and brain melanoma is present. Eyelid and conjunctival melanoma are extremely rare. Microscopic picture. Focal proliferation of subepithelial melanocytes. Melanocytes extend to episcleral tissue and deep in the orbit. Pre-invasive melanocytic tumors. Primary acquired melanosis. Risks cancerous melanosis. Acquired proliferative condition of the melanocytes situated within the epithelium of the conjunctiva. It affects middle-aged or elderly whites and is unilateral. Multiple flat brown patches of superficial conjunctiva are present. The rhesus cancerous melanosis has an insidious onset with waxes and wanes. PAM can be amelanotic, primary acquired melanosis, sign pigmento, and can occur in blacks, which is rare. 20% of patients develop malignant melanoma that is detected by nodularity and increased vascularity. Types Primary acquired melanosis without atypia Epithelial hyperpigmentation or melanocytic hyperplasia This is restricted to basilar region of epithelium without nuclear hyperchromaticity or prominent nucleoli. There is very low risk for conjunctival melanoma. Primary acquired melanosis with atypia Atypical melanocytic hyperplasia or malignant melanoma in situ involving conjunctival epithelium in 90% of cases. There is high risk for developing conjunctival melanoma. 20% if atypical melanocytes are confined to basilar part of the epithelium. 75% if PAM contains epithelioid cells. 90% if intraepithelial pagetoid spread is present. Atypical cells confined to epithelium constitute radial growth phase. Vertical growth phase represents invasive malignant melanoma. Invasive melanocytic tumors, conjunctival melanoma. This is a relatively rare malignant conjunctival tumor arising from conjunctival melanocytes. The incidence is 1 in 2 millions in fair complexion population. The uveal to conjunctival melanoma ratio is 10 to 1. Predisposing lesions. Primary acquired melanosis in 75% of cases. Pre-existing nevus, junctional or compound in 25% of cases. Conjunctival melanoma may also occur de novo, nodular melanoma. Conjunctival melanoma may affect bulbar conjunctiva, limbus, palpebral conjunctiva or caruncle. It appears as a nodular mass or variable pigmentation. It is highly vascularized and thus bleeds easily. Metastasis could occur locally, invading the globe and the orbit. Lymphatic spread is common to the preauricular and intraparotid nodes and is associated with poor prognosis. In lymph nodes, tumor cells gain access to blood vessels via anastomosis between lymphatics and blood vessels. Risk factors for metastasis include large tumor size, multicentricity, epithelioid cell type, and lymphatic invasion. Microscopic picture. Malignant melanoma cells invade the epithelium, subepithelial tissue. Cells show loss of polarity, variable degree of pigmentation, increased nuclear to cytoplasmic ratio, mitotic figures. Inflammatory lymphocytic infiltrate is present in stroma. Conjunctival melanoma has an unpredictable behavior. 
It behaves like skin melanoma, but calendar classification is not applicable to conjunctival melanomas. The mortality rate is 26%. Kaposi sarcoma. Multicentric vascular neoplasm affecting the skin, mucous membrane, lymph nodes, and viscera, and commonly affecting immunocompromised patients as HIV positive patients. Legions affect eyelid. Histopathology. Types. Classic type. Mucocutaneous. Lymphadenopathic visceral type. Mixed cutaneous visceral type in HIV positive patients.